And speaking of your 49ers, Rich. Oh, Mitchell. Speaking of your 49ers, which I know there's a lot of excuses to be had, but I, I know you don't want to use too many of them. Atlanta's a tough squad, but, but they, they really controlled this game 28 to 14. Your thoughts on the outcome and, and what's ahead for the Niners? The San Francisco 49ers are an elite team. They will be an elite team when it's all said and done, but nobody can be elite when you lose both your starting tackles, both your starting corners, three starting defensive linemen, your, your starting safety, your starting quarterback, and a starting linebacker. I don't know too many teams that have the ability to still be elite after all of that. And Atlanta has been playing really good football. Um, Marcus Mariota is is being very safe with the football. He's 13 to 14 for 124. Not not huge numbers, but that's all you need to do. Manage the game. He had he also had six rushes for 50 yards. That was the difference in the game. He had he was using his legs. That made the difference. They had 168 yards rushing as a team. I can't imagine the last time the San Francisco 49ers gave up that many yards rushing. But when you don't have Eric Armstead in the middle, you don't have Bosa, you don't have those big time, big playmakers. You can't play man to man coverage on the outside. So it changed the way that that D'Amico has to call the defense, then you're not going to have success. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo played a solid game, but he had some costly turnovers, one before the half where he's just trying to give Debo a chance. But later on in the game, you can't you can't have that interception. But Brandon Ayuk had a good game, but there was too many, way too many drops in the game, way too many self-inflicted wounds. But I still believe in him. I still believe the 49ers are going to going to compete at the end, just like last year. They'll find a way to get healthy at the right time. Trent Williams is going to be out for the season. McGlinchey. Probably has a calf. Going to make it tough to, to make it back for the Kansas City Chiefs game. The corners, the groin injury. I mean, Emmanuel Mosley won't be back. We don't know what's going to happen with various more. That groin is always, you know, you don't know when Bosa is coming back. So, ah, it's looking grim right now. But I still think they'll find their way into the playoffs and and, and they'll make it interesting. They get healthy by the playoffs. Nobody will want to see them. Uh, there's a couple blessings that come out of this, Rich. I mean, for one, the NFC West is turning into that, I guess, NFC East, what you thought to be dumpster fire. I mean, there, there's no team that's really differentiated themselves. A bunch of three and three squads right now, you know. And the second part to that, the Niners are going to be able to build some depth here. I mean, they're getting the injuries. If there's any time to have injuries happen, I guess it's at the beginning of the season. You know, they're going to get these guys back, like you said. Hopefully some of the backups can can elevate their game and take this team to the next level once those starters do come back. Well, they're going to have to take some risks. They're going to have to take some risks. Kyle Shanahan is going to have to to open the playbook up, and they're going to have to get creative because they're going to have to score some points. You know, they can't lean on the defense as they have been in the past. They're going to have to put up 30, 35 points a game in order to be competitive in these ball games because they have Kansas City Chiefs, and they ain't playing no games. Uh, sticking in the NFC West, Rich, the Seahawks. I'm going to start it off with one name. I know you love him, Tyreek Woolen. Tell me about him. First off, Mitchell, his fourth interception in his fourth game, like he's playing silly right now, Mitchell. It, it doesn't even make sense. Four interceptions in four games, and you and it's expectation. I was sitting on the couch with my wife, and I said, hey, Ty Kyler had thrown a ball his way, and they got a completion. I said, keep trying to, kid. He's going to have a book. It's a reason he has three of them in three games, and he threw the nine ball on him. You do not throw a nine ball on Se in <laughs> Seattle. Just uh, I had made that point before, personally. And now we got the kid making it for you now. Do not throw the nine ball in Seattle. He runs 4-2. There's nobody who's going to outrun him. He's jumping up in the air. He's got, he got long arms. He got good hands. He's going to bring it down. That's four and four weeks. Looking like the defensive rookie of the year. Then you got your boy, Michigan State guy. Kenneth yep. Walker Jr., at, at, there was a lot of concern once Rashad Penny had went down. Rashad Penny is the lead back. At, has been playing great football, unfortunate uh, season-ending injury. Um, Kenneth Walker has come through in a big way. Richard, I'll say this. With Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker the third, I think a lot of Seahawks fans thought they were going to have that thunder and lightning combo. Well, newsflash, Seahawks fans, you got that thunder and lightning in Kenneth Walker. I mean, the guy runs sub 4-4, four, four, was the king of breaking tackles at Michigan State, really should have been in the Heisman uh, race more. I, I thought it was the biggest sham that he wasn't invited uh, to the ceremony. But, but Rich, this is a guy much like Marshawn. Doesn't like to talk a whole lot. Let's to let his play on the field do the talking. And now the Seahawks team is three and three. They're gritty, Rich. They're scrapping out wins. And there was really no point in this game outside of the phantom block punt resulting in a touchdown where it was even close, Rich. I mean, the Seahawks handled this game. 
they're six games in, Rich. They're they're five hundred, and they're only getting better and better. And, and people saw, said Pete Carroll was crazy when he said, "We're not rebuilding, we're reloading." Well, nobody could have ever imagine they have would have one of the best rookie classes in all of football, and maybe in the last you know five or ten years um, in the National Football League, you got two starting tackles out of it. <laughs> Hmm. Crazy. If you just left with that, people would be like blown away. Hey, this is great. You got a starting corner and not just a starting corner, a starting corner that is the front runner for defensive rookie of the year right now. You got a starting nickel in Kobe Bryant who has not one, not two, not three, but like his running mate, four forced fumbles on the year. And every time, every game, it's almost like you're expecting it. Kobe Bryant is going to make a huge play. And, and changed the game. And he has done that week in, week out. He, he forced a fumble on Kyler Murray this year. And then you say, that's enough. You got you got four players out of the draft class. That's enough. Like, no more needed. But no. Then you get the running back, Kenneth Walker mm. Jr., to say, hey, we're going to secure the bag with this running back. And he's doing a great job. I know Pete Carroll and, and John Snyder are over the moon about this. But let's talk about Kyler Murray. Because he ran the ball 10 times for 100 yards. He 23 of 37. Like, had a solid game for 222, I believe. In a pick, because you don't try Reek. You didn't learn from the other three games that he got picks that you don't try Reek. But he had a study clause in his contract. And we got him next week, Mitchell. We got him next week mm-hmm. when they play the Saints. On Catch us on Amazon Prime at TNF tonight. Starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be covering the Saints and the Arizona Cardinals in Phoenix. But he's struggling. He's not seeing the field well. Richard, this is a team. I mean, we talked about it the last couple of weeks. This is a team without an identity right now, Rich. I mean, they had a hot start last year. You know, everyone thought they would be upper echelon team in the NFL, and then they just went stagnant. And they didn't just go into the valley, Rich. I mean, they they continued to go deeper and deeper and deeper into that valley. You, everyone thinks they're just going to snap out of it. When do they snap out of it? When they get D Hop back? I don't know. I, mean, uh, I, I don't know if D Hop uh, fixes his vision problems because he's not seeing the field, Mitchell. There are open receivers. When there's open receivers, he hits them sometimes. Sometimes he doesn't. There are plays that are obviously schemed up for certain receivers to be open. He's not even taking his eyes there. You see it from the all 22. You're like, hey, I can see what they were drawing up. And the guy they were drawing up to be open is open. And he's not hitting them, Mitchell. And that's where you're like, hey, like, Maybe there was a reason they were like, stop playing video games and study your playbook because you can't have those. If you're paying your quarterback $48 million, you don't expect him to miss not only wide open receivers, but schemed open receivers where you're like, hey, it's just, hey, we're going to circle this guy. We're throwing it to him. Just don't miss him. And he doesn't even look at that guy. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury cannot be happy. 